If you've been diagnosed with fatty liver, chances are your doctor told you to just lose weight. And while that's not wrong advice, it's not super helpful either. That's like asking someone how to run a marathon and then they tell you just run 26.2 miles. Technically true, but completely useless advice. So in this video, I wanna go over the exact steps that you need to take to not only reverse your fatty liver naturally, but to do it quickly and start seeing changes in just days to weeks. So what I wanna talk about is the best foods that you need to eat and the foods that you need to stay away from to fix your fatty liver fast. And at the end of the video, I'll go over other tips to help you maintain your liver health and I'll discuss the best supplements that you can take to help your liver recover faster. Now, to reverse fatty liver quickly, we have to start by focusing on one of the main culprits of fatty liver in today's environment and that is fructose, which is a simple sugar. Now, we want to avoid most sugars because even your table sugar, which is sucrose, also breaks down into fructose and and glucose once you ingest it. And here's the problem with fructose. Your liver just cannot handle too much fructose. So it converts excess fructose into fat that starts accumulating in your liver cells. And that process generates a lot of uric acid as a byproduct, which then leads to inflammation. And that's what perpetuates that continuous liver damage. And the most troublesome thing about fructose is that it also does not stimulate leptin. And leptin is a very important hormone that is released in our bodies after a meal and it signals fullness or satiety in our brains. So eating too much fructose does not generate a normal response in our brain that usually tells us that we're full so it makes it very easy to overeat. And here's the scary part. It doesn't take too much fructose to develop a problem. There are studies that show that just seven days of high fructose diet increase fat deposition in the liver and worsen liver insulin sensitivity. So how to avoid fructose? Well fructose is everywhere. It's a simple simple sugar that's usually found in fruits and root vegetables and honey. But before you swear off fruits and vegetables, just know that that's not the issue. It's the manufactured fructose in processed foods that is the problem. Because humans have been consuming fruits and honey for hundreds of thousands of years, but it really didn't become a risk until a few decades ago when fructose started to get introduced into our food supply as a sweetener and as a preservative. But if you get fructose from fruits, well, then you ingest that fructose with fiber which slows down the absorption of excess fructose. And then on top of that, many fruits are also rich in vitamin C, which actually blocks some of the effects of fructose. And vitamin C helps with inflammation. In fact, there are studies that show that increased fructose intake from fruit was associated with a reduced risk of fatty liver. So that brings us to one of the worst offenders that drives the overconsumption of fructose and fatty liver disease, and that is sugary drinks. Now we all know about the dangers of sodas, but the sneaky drinks that contain a a lot of sugars are juices, which are often promoted as healthy and often given to kids. So if you drink orange juice or apple juice or any type of juice, you have to look at the ingredient label and just see how many grams of sugars you get in one serving. Now these juice companies may try to fool you and add stuff like it contains natural sugars or this drink has zero grams of added sugars. Well, it may be natural, but it's still highly concentrated because we're absorbing all those sugars without the fiber that we would normally get if we're getting it from an actual fruit. And it's a lot easier to overconsume sugars if we're getting it in a liquid form. Other drinks you have to be careful about would be things like boba tea. Those things are often packed with sugar and a lot of them pack just as many grams of sugars and calories as your heavy desserts. So if you like boba tea, well then what you can do is just request for your drink to have 50% or 75% less sugar. And then other drinks that are just notorious for being loaded with sugars are your energy drinks and your sports drinks. So we have to be careful there as well. So how much sugar is acceptable? Well, the American Heart Association recommends consuming less than 36 grams of added sugar per day for men and less than 25 grams of sugar per day for women. But if you suffer from fatty liver disease, I would abstain from all drinks that contain sugar. Because think about it, a can of Coke has 39 grams of sugar, way above the daily recommended limit. Now compare that to quote unquote healthy alternatives. So a 12 ounce drink of apple juice has on average about 33 grams of sugar and orange juice has about 31 grams of sugar. So a lot of the seemingly healthy alternatives can be just as damaging to your liver as sodas, at least when it comes to sugar content. But here's some good news. We have studies that show that just nine days of fructose restriction can decrease liver fat. So you can start reversing this pretty quickly. 
And then there was a randomized control trial published in JAMA that noted that just eight weeks of restricting sugars in adolescent boys, and they decreased it to less than 3% of daily calories, has shown significant improvement in hepatic steatosis or liver fat. Now, for the record, any type of diet that puts you in a calorie deficit will reduce your liver fat. But if you want to get there quicker, you need to restrict your fructose and restrict processed carbohydrates, at least initially. Because we have studies that show that hypercaloric, low carbohydrate strategies result in liver fat reduction with changes as early as 48 hours. And an isocaloric, carbohydrate restricted and protein rich diet can reduce your liver fat by 43% in just two weeks. Now, there's also been quite a bit of controversy about whether you should restrict your fat content to help with your fatty liver? Well, this is not a black and white answer and there's quite a bit of nuance. If you look at this meta-analysis that includes 60 studies with over 100,000 patients, it was the higher caloric intake that was positively associated with NAFLD or fatty liver disease and not the diet composition. So the way I see it, it doesn't matter if you're on a high fat diet as long as you achieve a calorie deficit and you restrict fructose and processed carbohydrates, you're going to do very, very well. In fact, there was a study that looked at different diet dietary approaches. So this was a small study but a randomized control trial in Sweden where one group was randomized to the low carb high fat diet and another group was put on the 5-2 diet and the third group got randomized to just standard of care. So the standard of care group was counseled on reducing sweets and reducing saturated fats and the low carb high fat diet were instructed to restrict carbohydrates to a maximum of 10% of their total intake and get 50 to 80% of their calories from fat and about 15 to 40% of their calories from protein. So their diet included meat and fish and eggs and vegetable oils and dairy fat. And the 5-2 group were instructed to eat about 500 to 600 calories per day on two days of the week. And the rest of the time, participants were encouraged to follow a Mediterranean style diet. There was about 45 to 60% carbohydrates and 25% fat and about 10 to 20% protein. This was a modified Mediterranean diet that was adapted to local products available in Nordic countries. Well, after 12 weeks, all three groups reduced their liver fat, but the 5-2 Mediterranean group and the low-carb high-fat group had almost three times greater reduction in liver fat than the standard of care group, both at right over 50% liver fat relative change reduction versus 17% for the standard of care group. Now, there were some limitations to the study. Mainly, it was pretty small and it wasn't double-blinded because that just would not be possible with this type of study. And the authors of the study noted that the standard of care group did not receive the same guidance as the other two groups because the low carb high fat group and the 5-2 groups had more frequent consultations with their dietitians. But still, the results were pretty striking. So if you put it all together, the good news is for the most part, it really doesn't matter what diet you choose. If that diet puts you in a calorie deficit, all those roads will eventually lead to Rome. If you want to get there faster, the evidence shows that you really want to focus on restricting sugars, especially fruit and you want to limit your processed carbohydrates. But over long term, it's really whatever diet that is more sustainable for you. And that can be different for everyone. Now, here's something important that was going to help you achieve the calorie deficit, and that is get more protein, especially for breakfast. There was a study that looked at over 9,000 Australians that found that getting enough protein, especially during the first half of the day, for the first meal of the day, had profound effects on what people ate later in the day. And eating more protein in the morning morning translates to consuming less foods second half of the day, which is usually when most of us overeat. But the less protein you eat in the morning, the more likely you were to eat processed or sugary foods at night. So as a general rule of thumb, try to get at least 30 to 35 grams of protein per meal, especially for breakfast. Now, another thing that will help you with hunger and satiety is to increase your daily fat intake. But we do have to be careful about making sure you're maximizing your polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fats while being careful with saturated fats. Now, this seems to be a very controversial topic, but there's just too much evidence that supports the relationship between high saturated fat intake and risk of fatty liver disease. And that includes randomized control trials and comprehensive reviews and large cohort population studies. There's at least four human intervention studies that have confirmed the harmful effects of saturated fat on hepatic steatosis. But the one I want to highlight is a double-blind randomized control trial in which
which lean individuals were overfed with muffins high in either saturated fatty acids, in this case, palm oil, or polyunsaturated fatty acids. And this study used sunflower oil. And what they found was that just seven weeks of overfeeding resulting in a marked increase in liver fat in the saturated fat group, whereas the polyunsaturated group caused a nearly threefold larger increase in lean tissue or fat-free mass without an effect on the liver. So the overall take-home message here is you need balance. It's perfectly fine to eat saturated fats, but in moderation. So what that will look like is eating less fats that come from processed meats and eating less store or restaurant bought fry foods or pastries. And at the same time, we need to eat more unprocessed meat. And yes, red meat is fine. And we need more poly or monounsaturated fats that come from fish and nuts and avocados. Now, even though restricting carbohydrates can help reverse fatty liver faster, cutting out all carbs is not a requirement. Low carb diets have done wonders for some people, but for others, it just may not be sustainable. So if you're in that category, well then the good news is you can still eat carbs because it's the quality and the type of carbohydrates that we consume that plays a much larger role in the treatment of fatty liver. So you wanna prioritize carbs that have a low glycemic index, meaning they do not cause wild swings in your blood sugar. They're much better for your liver health than carbs that are high on the glycemic index. There was a study that actually compared the effect of low glycemic index versus high glycemic index carbs on the liver and found that consuming lower glycemic index carbohydrates produce greater improvement in liver markers. So what that will look like is getting more carbohydrates from things like legumes, so things like beans and lentils and whole grains and dairy. And I would try to stay away from high glycemic index carbohydrates like white bread and most breakfast cereals and processed potatoes like chips. Oh, by the way, there's a a couple of more drinks that we need to talk about. First, there's a few meta-analyses like this umbrella review that found that coffee may have protective effects when it comes to liver fibrosis, which is a more severe form of fatty liver. But this is all based on observational data, so we can infer causation. And another drink to definitely stay away from is alcohol, because alcohol directly worsens hepatic steatosis or liver fat accumulation, and it leads to this synergistic increase in liver injury. There's a recent system review published in the British Journal of Medicine that found that any level of alcohol in non-alcoholic liver disease or NAFLD may be harmful to liver health. And even moderate alcohol consumption doubles the risk of disease progression, which can lead to things like liver fibrosis and even liver cancer. Now, some of these steps may seem extreme, but if you have fatty liver, you want to stop the progression and reverse the disease as soon as possible before your liver turns into a more severe form of fatty liver, like NASH or steatohepatitis, and eventually to fibrosis and even cirrhosis, at which point the damage is irreversible. And the only way to fix it is to get a liver transplant. Now, if you like to enhance your recovery, well, then you can also try adding supplements to the food changes that we discussed. But to be clear, you do not need any supplements to fix your fatty liver disease, as long as you eat the right things and you use real whole foods as your medicine. However, there are supplements that actually show some promise that you can discuss with your doctor. So first, I would consider taking omega-3 fatty acids, particularly EPA and DHA, because they can help reverse fatty liver in several different ways. So first, they're good at reducing inflammation, and inflammation is a huge driver of disease in the progression of fatty liver. Omega-3s can also reduce triglycerides, and they help with fatty acid oxidation, which then lowers the overall fat deposition in the liver. So there's a systematic review and meta-analysis of 11 randomized control studies to show that omega-3 supplementation significantly reduce liver markers and marginally reduce liver fat content. But you do need to be careful with omega-3s and you need to be on the correct dose as some studies show that higher doses are associated with an increased risk of atrial fibrillation, which is an abnormal heart rhythm that can lead to strokes and heart failure. Okay, there's also evidence that berberine can potentially be used to help with fatty liver. There was a recent meta-analysis of 10 randomized control trials that showed that berberine significantly reduces liver fat and it improves liver enzymes and enhances lipid and glucose metabolism in NAFLD patients. Now there's quite a few other supplements that may have a role in helping with fatty liver. So you may want to look into things like curcumin and CoQ10 and there's certain probiotics and milk thistle. And I made a separate video on those and I'll post a link to those here. But as always, talk to your doctor before you make any changes to your health regimen or take any new supplements. I hope this is helpful. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one.